hallelujah. 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 It's an old song that we, my grandma used to sing. When, it, when she got trouble down and everything seemed a little bit heavy and she didn't know which way to turn. And I've experienced that myself, that I just didn't know what to do. I knew that there was one person I could call on. Hallelujah. Somebody's still calling on his name. 
Somebody is still calling on his name. Somebody is still calling on his name. Chapter 14, verses 10 through 14. Uh, Exodus 14, 10 through 14. The word of the Lord reads as follows. As Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up and there were the Egyptians marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, was it because 
There were no graves in Egypt that you brought us out to the desert to die. What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone? Let us serve the Egyptians. It would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. Moses answered the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm. And you will see the deliverance of the Lord. The Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. Here it is. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. My God. Let me read verse 14 for you again. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. As we begin this month of October, and I'm going to begin today with a new preaching series called Blessing in the Times of Crisis. Blessings in the Time of Crisis. And this morning from this particular text of Exodus 14, 10 through 14, I want to preach from this subject matter. Your stillness is your victory. My God, my God. Your stillness is your victory. In the midst of this pandemic, we've been dealing with for now some seven months. In the midst of this pandemic, I believe that most of us would have seen it in from a very negative perspective, and I understand why. You're talking about we've seen over 200,000 deaths, when we understand the economic shutdown and slowdown and the furloughs and the layoffs. When we look at the whole understanding of the sickness and disease and unto death and hospitals overflowing. When you think about the whole uncertainty of the pandemic. When we think about the whole element of who it's affecting, how it's affecting us. When we think about even in the midst of the pandemic, we're then uh, dealing with police brutality. We're dealing with racial tensions. We're dealing with the lack of integrity at sometimes at the highest of office. When we're dealing with this pandemic, it, is, it has been a series of negatives. It has been a series of downs. It's been a series of, of tumultuous times. In the midst of this pandemic, as we've been dealing with it, some of us have had an attitude shift. And it hasn't been a good attitude uh, uh, because the things around me are not going well. At times, I found myself in my feelings. Found myself crying or uh, just tears rolling down my eyes because of not knowing exactly how this is going to work out. During this pandemic, I've seen myself, my emotions up and down. Sometimes I have a, a spirit that the Lord will make a way, and then other times I have a spirit of, Lord, when are you going to show up? In the midst of it, we've been having some mental issues. Yeah, my mind has been all over the place. My mind has been up and down. As a matter of fact, it has stressed me, it has depressed me. It has brought forth anxiety in the midst of the pandemic. In the midst of the pandemic, it's internally affected me. Some, some of us are not even feeling well in our bodies because of what is going on. In the midst of this pandemic, we're, we're demonstrating that at times we've had a loss of focus. I it just seem to can't get focus and can't seem to go straight. Can't, can't seem to get my mind to be clear. In the midst of the pandemic, we've, we've been doubting at times even our purpose because of things just don't seem to be working out well. It, it seems as if my dreams and my visions have been crushed. In the midst of the pandemic, uh, at times the vision that I, I knew God had for me uh, during this pandemic, it's been hard to really see it come to pass or know when it's going to come to pass or know when we're going to be able to start up again. In the midst of the pandemic, it's been hard. It's been tough. It's been rough. That's the reality of being in the midst of a crisis. The reality of being in the midst of a crisis is to know that a crisis brings chaos. Crisis brings a, an instantaneous a change of things. And generally, it's not for the good. That's what, that's what a pandemic does. It, it brings a spirit of negativity. 
That's what a pandemic does. That's what the midst of this uncertainty. It creates, uh, it creates a feeling of uncertainty. And that's, what, that's where we are. And that's okay to, to be real with God. God. God knows all about you. He knows how you're feeling. You're not, you're not hiding it from God when you close your doors and close your blinds. You're not hiding it from God when you're crying tears on your pillow at night. You're, you're not hiding it from God uh, when you go into the bathroom and just close the doors and, and you just take a sigh. You're, you're not hiding it from God when you try to run away from the moment the time because you're not feeling uh, well because of what's going on around you. God knows all about you. God knows your feelings. God knows your emotion. God knows your mindset. God knows when you're up and when you're down. God knows when you're not feeling well. God God knows when, when it's just you when, you. when you have a spirit where it seems as if uh, uh, you can't get yourself going. God knows all about that. You you can't hide none of that. He He's your creator. He's your sustainer. He, he's omniscient. He's God. He's God. He's the alpha and the omega. He is everywhere at all times and because of that God knows what you're dealing with but in the midst of it being a pandemic and in the midst of us being in a crisis we must understand there are still some blessings there are still, God is still at work. And even in the midst of the pandemic and even in the midst of the emotional and feelings uh, being all over the place, your mind being all over the place, there has been some blessings. Uh, I, 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 I like that because in the midst of a, a crisis and a pandemic, God still shows us he's sovereign. God still shows us that he's still in control. God has a way of letting us know that yeah, you may be going through through something, but because I'm God, I'm going to bring you through it. Uh, and if you just wait on me, I'll take care of you in the midst. And somebody here today is willing to admit whether on Facebook or the conference call line or out here in the parking lot, yeah, when I can get through all my emotional stuff, I, I can see that God is still blessing. I may have been laid off, but I'm still in my house uh, or in my apartment. Uh, I, I, things may not have gone well uh, uh, in my health, but, but you know what? God is still healing. Uh, I, I, you know what? I didn't know where my next meal was going to come from, but I begin to see that God is providing. Even in the midst of when I was towed up from the float up, uh, God was able to bring some peace in the midst of my storm. I'm going to tell you right now, there is some blessings in in the midst of the crisis. I believe somebody can say, yeah, 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 yeah. And even in the midst of this crisis, uh, I can testify that God has been with me. Is there anybody out there uh, who pulled up this morning who's willing to say, I'm going to hold my horn right there because, Pastor, you are right on both streets. Uh, and there has been some troubling times, but there has also been some blessings. Uh, and is there anybody willing to admit uh, that I know God has blessed us? Uh, matter of fact, I came out, I left one job and got a better job. Uh, a matter of fact, I needed some time off anyhow. Uh, I'm more productive working from home than when I was in the office. Somebody can talk to me now. Somebody can say, yeah, I got, I got instead of, instead of paying a mortgage, uh, they wiped it clean while we get back, until I get back to work. There have been some blessings in the midst of the crisis. Yeah. Yes, right. And I'm glad because that's essentially what we find in our text. The children of Israel have been crying out to the Lord for 400 years. After there was a Pharaoh that, was, that came upon the scene who did not worship or who did not agree with the God that the children of Israel were worshiping that Joseph was there. He said they're too plentiful. And if we don't embondage them, here comes the crisis. If we don't embondage them, they're going to take it over. And there was a crisis of bondage or the crisis of slavery upon them for 400 years. But what they continued to do was to cry out to the Lord. The text says for 400 years, they cried out unto the Lord. In the midst of their crisis of being in bondage, they cried out unto the Lord. In the midst of going into slavery, after things had been really good for them, they kept crying out to the Lord. In the midst of now being in a position where it was one time they had authority, now they're subjected to authority. They kept on crying.
crying out to the Lord. At one time, when they were able to roam and walk along freely, now they're enslaved uh, and now having to work for nothing. They kept on crying out to the Lord. And now here they are. At one time, they were in the palace uh, and living good in the suburbs, but now they're in slavery, but they kept on crying out to the Lord. Here it is. I want you to hear it because uh, maybe somebody's not getting with me right now because your crying has been more of a pity party instead of a crying out unto the Lord. Because catch this, Moses said to Pharaoh, I just want to go and the people just want to go and worship our God. Hold up one second. Hold up, Pastor. I'm in the midst of a crisis right now. Uh, uh, right now I need to, I, I, you know, you don't know I, I'm trying to get to church, but but I got to work some overtime. Uh, you know, Pastor, hold up. I'm, I, you know, I, can't, I can't really focus on my devotional right now. See, this isn't the time to step back from God. This is the time to get more into God. Oh my God. They were in a crisis of slavery, but they kept on crying out to the Lord. But now crisis of slavery comes upon them. And as the crisis of slavery, they cry out unto the Lord. And the Lord will then send them a deliverer. But one of the things you need to realize is that even while they were in slavery, God was still with them. They were still plentiful. They were still multiplying. As a matter of fact, the slavery that Pharaoh thought was going to destroy them wound up blessing them. No, uh, uh, they, they kept no crying out to the Lord. But then in the midst of it, as they cried out, God was sin of deliverance. We know that Moses would be one that the Lord would raise up. And in the midst of it, they, Moses would go to Pharaoh and said, listen, we want to go and worship. Allow us to go and worship. And of course, Pharaoh was not for that. And so here it is that as the Moses goes back to the Lord, said, hold on one second. Uh, uh, he ain't going to let us go. The Lord said, go back and tell them and say, I am sent him. Now, if I was with you for 400 years in the midst of your crisis, while you were crying out, uh, don't you know I'll be with you when it's time for you to have to go up against Pharaoh? I just said something. He goes up and he says, Pharaoh, let my people go. Pharaoh said, nah, my heart's going to get harder as it gets harder because don't you know, crisis don't stop with other crisis. You see, crisis build on crisis. Woo. They were dealing with the crisis of, of being enslaved. Now comes the crisis, catch this, of the plagues. Now, the plagues were against the Pharaoh and the Egyptians. But the children of Israel still had to live in the midst of the crisis of the plagues among the Egyptians. I just said something and you missed the place to shout. Huh? That while God is dealing with the enemy, he'll protect his children. Let me say that again. Huh? While God is dealing with the enemy of the crisis of your moment, that is a crisis upon a crisis, God will be with you so that I may be destroying the enemy, but I ain't taking you out. Huh? Oh my God, I just said something. Huh? Here it is. Huh? They're in the midst of another crisis, and that other crisis are the plagues that are affecting the Egyptians. But God's hand is upon the children of Israel, and as his hands upon them, here it is. The Lord breaks them. Pharaoh says to Moses, all right, take your people. Tell them to go. Go on, get on out of here. Another back. And then in the midst of that, God then blesses the people to take all the riches of Egypt. My goodness. Uh, look at somebody and say, I'm coming out of this better. I'm coming out of this richer. I'm coming out of this with more stuff. Y'all quiet. I'm coming out of this because of crisis upon the crisis. The Lord says, I want you to take all the stuff. They take all the stuff. They're free after one crisis upon another crisis. But then here comes another crisis. Because it's in the text. As they are making their way towards the Red Sea. Pharaoh says, hold on one second. I'm losing too much of my economic engine. And he said, nah, we got to go and get them. Mount up the chariots. Mount up, mount up the chariot, mount up the horses, and they begin to search out and begin to go after the children of Israel. And as the Egyptians are coming and they're kicking up the dust, here comes the third crisis. Because don't you know, crisis builds upon crisis. We have the crisis of slavery, we have the crisis of the plagues, and now here comes the third crisis. The third crisis is now here they come. They got chariots, they got horses, they got weaponry, and all we got is all this stuff and nothing to fight with. 
Here it is, they're coming. They're coming. Look at what happens. Now they begin to complain. Hold on one second, Moses. Now, Moses, now, now you brought us out here. We get ready to die. Because they saw the dust kicked up. Moses, you brought us out here. Now what's what we going to do? Because they saw the dust kick up. Moses, you brought us out here. We told you to leave us alone in the midst of a crisis. I'm hurting right now after 400 years of slavery. I'm, I'm hurting right now after the plague. I'm hurting right now because now the Egyptians are coming at me. I don't want you to pray with me right now. I don't feel like prayer right now. I don't, I don't feel like hearing no word right now. I don't feel like tuning in the pastor on Facebook Live or YouTube or the conference call. I ain't got time for that right now. I'm in the midst of a crisis upon a crisis upon a crisis and it feels as if I've been left out here to die. Is there really anybody here today who's willing to admit to, that there's sometimes in the midst of the crisis as one crisis as another crisis and as another crisis built upon itself that you felt like you was left out there to die. It's okay to be real. They were complaining because they were real. They didn't know what to do. They was uncertain and one after one crisis after another crisis, after being beaten one time, after another time, after being hurt, after one time, after another time, after going through one trouble, then into another trouble, into another trouble, after being let down, after being let down, after being let down, after being put down, after being put down, you can get a little tired. Amen. Amen. And so here it is, catch this. I'm almost there, catch this. Look at what happens. They begin to complain. To let us alone. We've been better off in Egypt than in this desert to die. <laughs> hey, catch this. They've been through this crisis. The Egyptians are now coming. They're trying to come and to retrieve them. Moses looks back. Here comes the text. Here you go. That's just, here go your blessings right this. Look at what happens. Moses answered the people, do not be afraid. Stand firm, and you will see the deliverance of the Lord. The Lord will bring you today. Oh, there it is right there. See, your stillness is victory when you understand to not get queasy in the midst of trouble. Catch this. Uh, look what happens. They, they, get a, they get a little worried because uh, they see the dust kicking up. Uh, and what begins to happen to you is that you begin to remember what the other crisis that you were in. Oh, Lord, the plagues. Uh, you begin to understand. Look at the crisis you were in before that. Oh, my God the 400 years of bondage uh, and you begin to think uh, that this one right here is all that I can handle. I can't handle no more. I can't deal with no more. I can't understand no more. I can't hear no more. I can't see no more. I just can't deal with it. I can't handle it no more. But Moses says, listen, this is the place where you need to be still uh, because God is getting ready to do something. Hold up one second. Uh, look at what he says. He says, stand firm. Uh, because what a crisis does, it makes you get a little antsy. What a crisis does, it makes you get, uh, uh, makes you feel as if you gotta hurry up uh, and do something. Uh, what a crisis does, uh, it gets you to a place uh, by which uh, you have some anxiety. What a crisis does, uh, it makes you get out in front of God. Uh, but look at what Moses says. Uh, Moses said, hold up, uh, stand firm. This isn't a time to get queasy. Uh, this is a time. Uh, to be able to trust in God. He said, stand firm and you will see the deliverance of the Lord will be with you. Not tomorrow, not next week, not next month. You ain't got to wait, but this deliverance will be with you today. Why today? Because I know what you've been through. I know what you've been through for 400 years. I know what you've been through through the 10 plays, and I know how you feel right now huh? as you see the Egyptians coming huh? oh I feel that right there huh? and so I'm not going to delay this one huh? you ought to look at somebody right now huh? wherever you are huh? whether the car beside you huh? or somebody else in the house huh? say this blessing huh? will not be delayed huh? this blessing
blessing is going to show up today because God already knows I've been through too much and I need this to show up today. Hold on, catch this, catch this. Look at what happens. He says, stand firm. This isn't a time to get queasy. He says, now to stand firm. He says, you will see the deliverance of the Lord. Uh, he will bring it to you today. Catch this. But then, hold on. Not only that, your stillness is your victory. Because you're not going to get in front of God. But catch this. Look at what happens. Look at what happens. The Lord says, the Egyptians, you see today, <laughs> you will never see again. Okay, hold up. The, the very thing that has caused you to be in crisis, you will never see it again. Okay, y'all. Okay, see. Uh, uh, listen what happened. He says, the, the very thing by which you, you've been dealing with for 400 years, you will never see it again. The very thing that I brought the place upon because the heart of the Pharaoh got hard, you will never see it again. Uh, the, the, the very ones right now huh, that has made you huh, a little scared, huh, uh, you'll never see it again. Huh. Oh my God, I just said something. Huh. Somebody ought to get happy right now. Huh, that even in the midst of the crisis, huh, God has a way of eliminating huh, the very thing huh, that's caused you your issues. Oh my God, huh. you're trying to, listen, you can't fight against it. Huh. You ain't got no weapons. Huh. You can't fight against it. You ain't got no chariot. Huh? You can't fight against it. Huh? You ain't got no shields. Huh? You can't fight against it. Huh? You ain't got no horses. Huh? But because God is my deliverer, huh? what I know if I just be still, huh? that God will deal huh? with the enemy huh? that has brought forth my crisis. Huh? Oh, what are you saying, pastor? Huh? What are you saying, preacher? Huh? That when God delivers huh? that very devil, huh? that very scheme, huh? that very plan, that very imp, that very naysayer, that very problem, that very trouble, you will not see it again. Somebody ought to give God some praise right there. Because when you steal, God will deliver you. When you steal, God will steal. When you steal, God will shut down your enemy. When you steal, God will work it out for you. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Catch this, I gotta go. Catch this, I gotta go, I gotta run. Look at what happens. He says, you're still, this is your victory. Because one, you're not gonna run when you get queasy. God's going to deal with the enemy huh, so you don't see him no more. Huh. But then here it is. I got to run. Catch this. Huh. He says the Lord will. All right. Oh boy, I wish I had a church. He said the Lord will fight for you. Huh. You need only huh, to be still. Huh. You ought to look at somebody huh, and say, child, huh, you're doing too much. Huh. Or you ought to look at somebody huh, and say, honey, huh, you're doing too much. Look at what he says. He says, the Lord will fight your battle. Understand this. Catch this. Part of that issue is that when they saw the Egyptians coming, and when they saw the Egyptians kick up the dust, when they saw the Egyptians trying to come and retrieve them, what begins to happen is the question, how are we going to fight? They thought they were going to die, but the question was, how are we going to fight? We don't have nothing to fight with, but when you are still and you stand firm, and you trust God, God will fight your battle. You can fight slavery yourself. You need a God. You can fight the place yourself. You need a God. Okay, let me come and get you. You can fight drug addiction. You need a God. You can fight your alcoholism. You need a God. You can stop. Smoking the cigarettes or the weed, you need a God. 
You couldn't stop the fornication. You needed God. You couldn't stop the adultery. You needed God. You couldn't stop the attack of the enemy. However, he showed up. You needed God. And I don't know about nobody else, but I'm so thankful that I know that God will fight my battles. Just be still. God will fight for you. Just be still. The Lord will show up. Just be still. He'll work it out. Just be still. God has already got it. He's got it. Be still. Stop moving. Be still. Stop being antsy. Be still. Stop being queasy. Be still. Stop being anxious. For the Lord will fight your battles. Your stillness is your victory. Your stillness is your triumph. Your stillness is how you're going to come out. Stand firm. Stand firm. You know that he is God. Oh, oh I feel something. We got to get out of here and catch this thing. Uh, you ought to you high five somebody uh, you ought to blow the horn right now uh, and say baby I've been doing too much I just need to be still and see the victory oh God you ought to call your friend you ought to get on Facebook you ought to get on Instagram and say honey you're doing too much be still Blessing in times of crisis is knowing your stillness is your victory. And right now, somebody knows, you know what, preacher, you've been talking to me. And right now, I've got to be still. The Lord, the Lord knows what you've been going through. He knows you've been dealing with one crisis after another crisis after another crisis. The Lord knows what you've been dealing with. The Lord knows you've been struggling. One crisis after another crisis after another crisis. And now God says, just be still. <laughs> because your stillness right now is your victory. Don't be scared because you see the dust. If God can bring you out of 400 years of slavery, and God can keep you in the midst of uh, the plagues. Don't you know God can bring you through this right now? Yes, sir. Be still. It is your victory. There may be somebody who says, you know what, Pastor? My stillness right now is being still and knowing Christ as my Lord and Savior. And right now, today, I want to give my life over to you, Lord, today. I want to pray the prayer of salvation to come to know him for myself today. You're right. My stillness right now is me receiving Jesus as Lord and Savior. And today I want to pray the prayer of salvation because I want to confess with my mouth and because I believe upon my heart that today my stillness is my victory in knowing Jesus. And today, if that's you, I want you to pray this prayer with me if you've never prayed it before. Heavenly Father, I've sinned against you. I want forgiveness of my sins. I repent of my wicked ways. Heavenly Father, today I believe you sent your son Jesus to die for me. Today I believe that he rose for me. I, today I believe that he ascended. He's sitting at the right hand of the Father making intercession for me right now. Today, God, I invite you into my heart and into my life. And today, Heavenly Father, I just receive you as my Lord and as my Savior, as I have confessed with my mouth and now I believe it upon my heart. And today, God, yes, I say yes to you. Come into my heart, come into my life as I surrender my life to you. And today, God, I seal my salvation and yes, the gift of your Holy Spirit by saying yes and amen. If that's you and today you prayed that prayer for the first time in your life, today, I want you to do something. I want you to call the church office, 704-392-0522. 
I want to pray with you. I want to assure you that you are saved. I want to lead you, whether it's to the heights or to a church where you can grow in your relationship with God. But there may be somebody else who says, you know what? I've been, I've been watching, I've been doing, and I need a church home, a place that I may grow, a place where I can be planted, a place where I can exercise my gift of others who want to equip kingdom citizens. And today, I want to become a part of the Heights Ministry. If that's you, whether you're here in the parking lot, or you're with us by YouTube, or Facebook, or the conference call line, if you are, call the church office, 704-392-0522. I want to pray with you. I want to welcome you into the heights. I want to introduce you to the church family. That together we can be equip kingdom citizens. If that's you, whether you're here in the parking lot or you or your Facebook or YouTube, you want to become a part of the church or you're now a part of the kingdom, just, just lift your hand. Huh? We got folk around here who'll come and worship with you and come pray with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your victory is in your stillness because yes there are blessings in a time of crisis for those who are joining us by Facebook or those who are joining us by conference call or those who are joining us by YouTube we get ready to partake of the Holy Communion you will do it virtually but we're going to share together for those who have pulled up here for service so go ahead go ahead go ahead right now get your bread get your crackers get your water get your juice because we get ready to have virtual Holy Communion right now. For those who are joining us virtually, as you are now prepared yourself to receive communion, your stillness is your victory in the midst of crisis. And all of us are going to deal with some crisis. So I ask right now. For those who are joining us virtually, you got your crackers, you got your, your juice ready. The blessing in the time of crisis means that your stillness is your victory. And we know that in that stillness, there came a Savior. There came a Savior in the name in the very embodiment of Jesus the Christ. And he said to his disciples in an upper room, he says, this rep here, this, 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 this wafer, this cracker, this bread represents my body. They will be broken for you, for your victory. For your blessing in the time of crisis. And he told his disciples, he says, uh, he says, as often as you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Paul even extended and said, before you partake, examine yourself. Confess your sins. Repent of ways that are not like God. So you don't take it in an unworthy manner. For those who are joining us virtually, I want you to break it. And I want you to eat with me right now. And as often as you do that, you do it in remembrance of me. On that same night, same night the blessing and the crisis of Christ getting ready to depart physically. Their stillness in that room was the victory of his blood. But he says, this represents <laughs> my redeeming power. This blood is being shed for you to wash away your sins. And for those who are joining us, he says, the only that you do this, do this in remembrance of me. Let us drink with one another. And there become a great celebration because the blessing in the time of their crisis was the stillness of victory in that upper room as Jesus would soon give his life for them. And today the Lord spoke to us because he said to us in the midst of our crisis, one, we don't have to be queasy. 
we can just be still. One, we know that our stillness brings us victory over our enemies. But our stillness allows God to fight our battles. And that's how we have a blessing in a time of crisis. May heaven smile upon you. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus be with you. And may the blessed Holy Spirit watch over us until we come back again. To those on Facebook, those on YouTube, those on the conference call line, we love you and God blesses upon you. Amen.